how many of us have been set free here? And con like you said, we're continuing to be set free because none of us have arrived, right? And, um, and I just thank God for the healing ministry that Jesus didn't just die on the cross just for us to get to heaven. He died on the cross so that we can live an abundant life. Because John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I've come to give you that life more abundantly. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So as you know, last week I started out teaching on how deliverance is a healing ministry. And it's, it's something that, um, you know, everybody really should go through. I don't think everybody has a spirit. But if you've never gone through deliverance, you probably have something. So, but, <laughs> but. You know, Jesus desires, you know, and the more we grow, the more we mature in the Lord, our soul is what needs to be healed. Because when we're born again, our spirits are automatically born again. But it's our, the soulless realm, as you know, that needs to get um, sanctified. So tonight, I'm, I'm going to teach on the spirit of rejection. And this particular one here, pretty much if you're human and you're alive here, you've battled rejection. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, though, this spirit of rejection, it's a, it, I, I, you know, it's a masterpiece of satanic oppression. And it robs Jesus of his rightful position with us. Because that spirit of rejection causes us to withdraw, causes us to not accept his love, have a problem with receiving. And it's really something that uh, I'm going to elaborate on it, but it's really something that really hinders us from entering into the fullness of the Lord. And it's something that I had to deal with, uh, you know, for a long time. And I still am pretty careful about it. But it's something that can cause you to second-guess yourself, not walk in the destiny plan of what the Lord has for you. It's just insidious. So uh, it wounds us so, so deeply. And, and many people go around untreated with this spirit of rejection and have many emotional issues and really the root of it is rejection. So we'll discuss that. So rejection has a way of destroying a person's life in a way that other, no other things can. And the sad fact is, as I said, many of us have it. Many of us have um, really struggled with it. Thank God many of us are set free from it. But some are still really struggling with it. And I, every now and then I start tapping into that thing and I recognize it. And, and then I have to, like, back myself up and say, no, wait a second, and then start decreeing the word of God. So if we want to be all that God has created us to be, then we have to overcome this. All right? It's just the bottom line. It affects us internally. And, and you know, again, the word, like I said last week, the word has to have final say. Because how many times do we say, oh, I don't feel love. Or I don't feel that God's answering my prayer. Or I don't really feel this. Or I don't feel that. See, it's got, faith is not about a feeling. It's, our, it's, it's by the word. And the word has to have final say here. And so that was something that was really important for me because I had really struggled with the acceptance, ex, being accepted. And, you know, uh, it was that performance thing, which we'll get into in a moment. And just really had major issues with that. Right, Peter? Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so rejection is denial of love. It's not the only thing, but it, there, there is a denial of love. Or, or, you know, a lot of times it's a perception that there's a denial of love. And, um, you know, and so what does the Bible say about the Lord? It says God is love. And so if there's going to be an issue there hindering the love walk with the Lord, a lot of times it's the root of rejection. Because how many times we've counseled a gazillion people and how many times the, the, what, what the issue is, they don't feel accepted. Right. How many times have we heard, I don't feel like I fit in. I don't feel like I'm accepted, right? So, you know, when we're rejected, we feel unloved. We feel that we're disapproved of and, and we're excluded. And, and we're we feel that we're denied of the love and, and, and uh, even respect. All right. So. But we know that love defeats the enemy. That's why he hates anything, any kind of teaching about the Father's love. I'm telling you, the Father's love message is what really was a turning point for me in truly learning to accept that he loves me. Yeah. I'm accepted in the beloved, yeah. not because of how I perform, not what I can do, not for living a you know, life of perfection. God loves us. He died on the cross. He knew what we were like. 
and he chose to die on the cross for us. And that's, that's what's so beautiful about the Lord. I, I typed, I didn't have it on your handout, and, but in 1 John 4, 16, um, I wrote it out on my notes in the Passion. And it says here, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for us. God is love, and those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. I just love the way that's worded. Those who are living in love are living in God. And that means just like we just have to accept the love of God regardless of what the enemy is telling us. And there's a battle there. All right, so it, rejection attacks the very person of who we are. It destroys our self-esteem. It, it attacks who we are and our purpose in life. And everybody responds to rejection in a different way. Everybody suffers with rejection in a different way, and we'll get into that. So it's one of the most common tools of the enemy and that he uses to destroy a person's life, period. God never, ever, ever wants us to feel rejected or abandoned. Because what does he say? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never. But how many times we hear or have we said, I feel so alone. I feel like nobody understands me. I mean, we've all said it, most of us. And so, but God is saying, will you listen to them? I have my word here and I died on the cross for them. And they are accepted in the beloved. And so that's where, that's the battlefield there is in our mind. And so that's where we have to war against what the enemy says. Now, not every time you're experiencing this rejection or these thoughts, not every time means you have a spirit, but there is a spirit of rejection that you have to get set free from and understand that as the enemy taunts you with this, his goal, God bless you, his goal is to have that open door where that spirit comes in, all right? So the, uh, the Lord desires for us to know who we really are. And because this rejection also affects purpose and destiny, how many times do we hear, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm called to. I've said it. <laughs> Even pastoring, I've said it. So God loves us and he accepts us and he wants us to know his purpose and his plan. He said, well, how does it go in Jeremiah? For I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper and not fail. He has a, he has, there's an expected end. There's a direction that he has for us. So God word, God's word tells us that without being rooted and grounded in the love of God, that we will have, we cannot experience the fullness of the Lord. And that is on your handout. And I typed it out in Ephesians 3, 19 in the passion. I really love the way it's worded. It says here that we're talking about the love of God. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measure that transcends our understanding. And this extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. I just love that. And you can see... You know, it's an action word there. Until we are filled, it's a constant thing. We're constantly being overflowed with his love so that we operate in the fullness of the Lord. Now, we know that Jesus is, was the man like us when he, when, when he was on earth, right? In the Bible, in, in Isaiah, and I'm going to read it to you, the message version, and the message version from uh, verses 1 through 6. He endured and he experienced rejection, all right? So even when we're going through it, he knows exactly what we're feeling. So listen to this. It says, who believes what we have heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? The servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant in a parched field. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over a man who suffered who, who knew pain firsthand, one who looked, I mean, I'm sorry, one look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him and thought he was scum. Wow. 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 So think about how he was rejected. Wow. His peers, his disciples, the people he hung out with, everybody rejected him right. and the pain that he endured in his heart. Yeah. And so, you know, I said, Lord, I know that you understand us because you know our frame you know what we're made up of 
And your desire is you, it, your death was not in vain for us to walk in freedom and to truly accept the love of God and to know that God has the purpose and plan for 